Thank you, Dr. Papazian. It is uh, my honor, quite frankly, to be here to receive this award from the new president of San Jose State, my alma mater, <laughs> to be introduced by one of my three sons, my wife and I, my wife Lupe, and I have three grown sons, and they're all in the arts or some aspect of it, directors, actors, and uh, trying to do what they can do to make the world a better place for all of us. Uh, I'm very impressed with the fact that Dr. Papazian was an expert on John Donne, because that is one of the inspirations for much of what I have done with my life, and I learned about that poem, and I think here on campus, if not in high school, but I remember some significant lines, which you may, no man is an island entire to himself, we're all part of the mainland, and then I'll paraphrase it, therefore, never send to know for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. Powerful words from a powerful poet. But I think an underlying lesson for all of us about the meaning of this place, and also about any of my achievements, no one does anything by themselves. It always takes a team, it takes a family, as we have seen with Dr. Papazian, and her children, and her husband, and her mother. Certainly, we are all part of a wave, and so am I. And at this table are many of my colleagues, my wife, Lupe, through heel, stand up, Lupe, take a bow. We'll be celebrating our 48th anniversary this August. But I also have members of the Teatro Campesino family, my longtime producer, Phyllis Parza, Rosa Podaca, Licha Munoz, please, Joe and Marilyn Cardinale, Richard Vasquez, please stand up, people, and, and take a bow. These are my colleagues. Thank you. And thank you for the 40 to 50 years that all of you have invested into the work of the Teatro Campesino. No one does it alone. This is why we have universities, so that people can learn that we're all interlocked and interdependent, and that we need each other. Uh, I learned diversity, I learned multiversity in this university. I became acculturated in this university. Uh, after high school, I went to James Lick High School, and I'll never forget. Yeah, I was a comet. <laughs> and I'll never forget that spring of 1958 when they bust those of us that were interested in engineering across the valley to a place called Varian Associates, where they had apparently just invented the first microchip. 1958, as I graduated from high school, the microchip was coming in. It's been uh, a rocket ride, you know, in terms of evolution and progress in our world. And a lot of it has stemmed from this tremendous valley where I used to pick a lot of prunes and a lot of apricots and a lot of tomatoes and a lot of apples. But it became the Silicon Valley. Incredible. I wanted to be part of that Silicon Valley. And again, with all of the push in 1958, I was a math and physics major here at San Jose State. Straight A. I mention that because uh, I don't look like a straight A math and physics major. <laughs> Nobody would look at a Mexican and say, what, are you in the sciences? Why, what is this, you know? And I wrote a poem called Highway 99 uh, uh, at that time, you know, but I did switch majors. It happened that uh, I used to go to the Winchell's Donut Shop over here on 5th and Santa Clara, right where City Hall is now. All of the math majors would go there and we'd do our math and eating donuts and stuff. And so I had a lot of young bucks, a lot of guys out there with their slide rules. We used to carry our slide rules like guns, right? In those days. And I loved all the paraphernalia and everything, but I didn't like the rap. They were talking about how much money they were going to make. And quite frankly, it upset me, it made me angry. And so I stormed out, I said, I don't wanna to listen to this crap. And so it was cold and I walked back and I used to cut through the drama department <laughs> on the way to Winchell's and then back. And that one day I stopped and started to hang out in the green room. And I said, I need to change. I need to change my major. And so I became an English major with an emphasis in playwriting. And I wanted, I wanted to do what I could do in order to alleviate some of the racism that I saw that was still evident even on this campus. You know, I'll never forget my first sight. My big brother came here in 1955 and he brought me with him and I was still in high school. And I remember seeing the quadrangle and I seeing 
this beautiful campus. And I said, I want to be here. I want to learn here. And I did. But I switched majors because I needed to work more specifically on the problem of the human misunderstanding that centered around race and culture. A lot of people didn't understand that someone like me, having grown up as a migrant farm worker, by the time you get to San Jose State, man, you're fully American. You are acculturated, come on. You've arrived. And yet I realized that there are a lot of people who were really ambivalent about their background and their skin color and language and all of that. And people used to come up to me and say, do you speak English? And I said, como que no, cabrón? Of course I speak English, you know. I became an English major. A straight A English major, well that was worth, you know. But I wanted to write plays, you know, and it was here also that I had a great lift from a great Armenian-American playwright, William Soroyan, who came and saw the shrunken head of Pancho Villa and gave me a boost. And later, later in, in 1970, he came to our first Chicano Teatro Festival in Fresno. And the example of William Soroyan and Dr. Papazian and all the Armenians and what they went through, the slaughter, all of that is part of my history too. It doesn't make me any less Chicano to be able to identify with Armenians or with African Americans, because I cut my political eye teeth here marching for the civil rights movement starting in 1959. And so on and on it goes, women's rights. You know, I had a friend here, my roommate, my last roommate here, Frank Chichorka. His father had changed the Polish name of his family to Chick. Frank changed it back to Chichorka. He said, I'm a, I'm a Polish American, so. And Frank was an architect, and Frank, Frank used to be able to earn his lunch money doing architectural plans. But he went to Mississippi summer in 1964. He went to register black people to vote in Mississippi and that took guts, and I admired it. I went to Cuba. I went to Cuba where I discovered that I'm a continental American that summer. And then I came back and directed the shrunk head of Pancho Villa here. But the thing is that a university in the very word is the many in the one, the one in the many. And there are voices today that want to turn the clock and go back. I think it's wonderful, astonishing, tremendous that the CSU system is finally acknowledging women as college and university presidents. I was ready, I was ready for the first woman president of the United States of America. But there are people that want to turn the clock back. There are people that want to take away these ideas, the learning. And we need to get our kids in here. We need to get new generations. Come to the university. Come to learn about the world. Come to learn about the human race. Come to learn how we can interlock because no man or woman is an island. We're all part of the mainland. And in the mainland, we must hang together. We must hang together in order to be able to survive. America, you are the dream and the hope of the world, but you must be true to what you are. And it is at universities that we learn who we are. And you share that. We are all one human race, regardless of color, creed, background, what have you. It's an old story, but it's amazing how many people still ignore it. And so I want to thank Dr. Papazian. I want to thank all of my colleagues in the Teatro Campesino. I want to thank my son and family. I want to thank all of you for being supporters of my alma mater. Alma mater, my soul mother. That's what it means. Alma mater, the soul mother which is San Jose State University now and forever. Thank you.